News 4 Jack starts right now with a breaking news alert. New photos now into our newsroom showing the moment police escorted those 11 hostages out of a local bank just 90 minutes ago. Their loved ones seeing them, waving to them, relieved and overjoyed that they had finally been free. Standoff lasted two hours in Northwest Jacksonville. It ended when the SWAT team moved in and cuffed the robber. Right now, the suspect is in police custody. We were given a name during Sheriff Mike Williams' news conference, but apparently that suspect has been misidentified. So we're working to learn more about his identity. And just minutes ago, uh, well, they did that. Channel 4's Jim Pickett joins us live from the library across the street, where right now family and loved ones are getting to be reunited with uh, those who've been held hostage, Jim. Well, they're waiting to be reunited is actually what's happening at the Northwest Branch. If you look back here, they've been taken inside the community room here as they're waiting, and that's where they're going to be doing the reunion here. You can imagine people have been relieved. Uh, they've been out here throughout the morning and all of this, not knowing what to expect, and then learning the news that actually that this suspect was actually holding a gun to the back of the heads of some of these hostages. They were scared to death, and we've got that because one woman, um, uh, Darmina Cruz, her sister was in there, and her mother was talking to her uh, on the phone as exactly what happened when she was released. So I want you to listen to this phone call that she got when she finally got the chance to talk to her daughter. It's very emotional. Take a listen. Oh, praise the Lord. You made it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And guys, that oh, woman you just heard you from Lord. is now on the phone that. with her daughter you right now. That. Thank you, God. Thank you. Oh, yes, Lord. You made it out. He was chasing you, Shonda. Oh, oh Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Lord, have yes. mercy. I'm so glad. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Yes. Okay, she okay. Praise the Lord. We've been praying for you, baby. We've been praying for you. I just want to hold you, Lord. Let me talk to my niece. I just want to love you, Lord. Oh, I love you, baby. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you made it out, Lord. All right, apparently having some technical problems. Jim is there, and he will be there as the loved ones go ahead and get to move into the public library at some point in the next uh, half hour or so and be reunited. Her voice, oh, my gosh. And, and the emotion. Yeah. And the emotion. And, you know, she sounded surprised. It's like, he chased you. Yeah. You know, and we learned a number of very emotional things, you know, during the course of the news conference and certainly listening into that phone call that the situation was much more dire yeah. than we, you know, had, had really thought from the get-go. Yeah. So let's talk about the timeline of events, how this all started and how it wound up. Well, of course, we've had crews there all morning long. Let's bring Heather Lee now into the fold to bring us up to date. This all started basically just a, right after the bank, quite frankly, opened. Yeah, and Jen, you know, we I, I was talking to you about this earlier, but we were out here on the scene, so we were able to see some of the things that you guys back in the studio and our viewers were not able to see, at least when it was happening, because the JSO officers had come over here and asked us to learn to turn off of our live capability so that they could go ahead and, and start with that tactical maneuver that they were talking about. Uh, so I, I want to go over what we saw out here on the scene with our own eyes, and we were able to use our camera and get these shots. We just couldn't do it live for you. So I want to show you some video. This is the whole situation, and it started just after 9 a.m. JSO got the call of a possible hostage situation, and they headed to the bank immediately. They weren't sure if anyone had been injured at that point. About an hour and a half later, JSO asked the media to turn their cameras off live mode because they were going to do that tactical maneuver and didn't want the suspect to see what they were doing. 30 minutes later, at around 11 a.m., we saw glass breaking and that bobcat pushing on the building. Right after that, we see two hostages run. You can see them attempt to leave the area, but officers tell them to get down. About three minutes later, the first group of hostages are released, and then you see the second group of hostages released. And I'll tell you, the emotion out here was overwhelming as family members saw their loved ones crossing the street. I could hear people gasping, uh, seeing them walking across the street. And, you know, as you see in the video, a lot of them were waving at their family members just to signal to them that they were OK. Of course, very shaken up at this point. 
Now, we don't have a whole lot of information about the suspect. As you guys were saying, JSO did name someone, and then they came back and said that that name was incorrect. So they're working on getting a correct name for us at the moment. Uh, but again, we're still waiting to uh, see the people that were held hostage be reunited with their family members. I'm sure that's going to be an absolute wonderful moment. And then, of course, we're hoping after that we'll be able to speak with some of those hostages about what they went through, because I can only imagine this was extremely awful and very scary. For now, we're live. Heather Lee, Channel 4, The Local Station. Heather, thank you. We heard from the president of the Community First Credit Union during the Sheriff's News Conference. The bank itself just issued a, a statement, and it reads in part, we are so thankful that today's hostage situation resolved itself in a safe way. Our hearts and prayers are with the families and membership. <clears throat> we are thankful and appreciative for JSO and law enforcement as they did a fine job handling the situation. Now we need to get back to our employees and membership and make sure that everyone is taken care of. Thank you again. Again, that is from the CEO and president of Community um, First Credit Union. Uh, and now, in the meantime, we were just talking, in fact, Heather mentioned it, that there was misidentification of the man who is now in custody, accused, of course, of, robbing the, of trying to rob the bank and taking those people hostage. And it's interesting. Let me take you behind the scenes a little bit, because when we heard Sheriff Mike Williams say the name, Jen and I kind of looked at each other because it sounded... You know, similar to a name that had been bandied about as one of the people who've been held hostage, uh, one of the 18-year-old employees. So that's all been cleared up. Uh, what was the family's reaction? Janice Harris has the latest on that. Yes, the, the family clearly upset. And you might recall, I spoke with the mother, Latarsha Schumann, earlier. She said she received a text message from her son while he was in the bank saying, Mom, I am okay. I asked her how she felt. She said, you know, she was upset about it, but she was glad that JSO was able to clear her son's name because he is not the suspect. In the meantime, I asked her, have you had a chance to see her, your son? She said no. They said it was it's going to take some time and that she has to wait to see her son. So she still has not had a chance to be reunited with him just yet. But this is still an ongoing investigation. Gil Smith, our crime and safety analyst, talking to us about how this is still an ongoing investigation, despite you know some traffic is coming and going. But there's still a, a police presence here. Yeah, but it's much more calmed down now. The Edgewood Avenue is opened up, and also the gunman has been removed. Some of the hostages may be gone after they interviewed. So now they can slow down and just take their time. There's really no need to rush through this now because it's a safe, secure scene. And they just want to make sure they get everything that they need because this is their only chance to really process the scene properly. So they'll just take their time and do what they need to do. And I can understand frustration from family wanting to see their loved ones that were inside of that bank, but they have to talk to 11 people. Right, and it's going to take a little bit of time um, to, to talk to all of them. So they want to be very consistent, very thorough with their interviews. So it just takes a little bit of time. But the best thing, that at least they know that they are safe and they are not harmed, but they will be able to see and speak with them shortly. All right, thank you, Gil Smith, Crime and Safety Analyst. Bruce Jen, back to you. Janice, thank you very much. Channel 4's Tarek Miner has been looking at some crime stats to give us an idea of how volatile this area is. And I can tell you the community has been working hand in hand with the sheriff's office to stem the rising crime tide. Yeah, and Tarek, we know that more than 4,000 banks were robbed just last year alone across the country. Yeah, that's according to the FBI, but you might be surprised at the number of hostage situations. Hostage situations in the course of a bank robbery don't happen as much as one might think. According to the FBI statistics from 2015, there were 4,091 bank robberies, but only 56 hostage situations last year in the U.S. 12 customers and 44 employees were held against their will, so that's 56 actual hostages. Now, when it comes to fatalities, deaths, there were nine people killed last year, and in eight of those cases, it was the bank robber, him or herself, that was killed, and in one instance, a bank customer was killed. As for injuries, 10 customers, 35 employees, and nine bank robbers themselves were injured, and remarkably, acts of violence were committed in only 3% of the 4,091 bank robberies. The most common day for a bank robbery in America, a Friday, followed by Wednesday, and then Thursday. And the most common time for a bank robbery is right when that bank opens up, just like today's robbery, which occurred around 9.08. Now, last year, 1,042 robberies occurred between 9 and 11 a.m., 933 between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. And when it comes to the mode of operation for these bad guys, most robbers are demanding money with the note, followed by cases where the robbers are actually uh, threatening others with weapons. Now, an explosive device was threatened in 108 different bank robberies last year.
Bruce Jen. And I think what we're gleaning from those FBI statistics is that in most cases, the robber wants to get in and get out with a bag of cash. And most, the majority, don't seem to escalate into violence or even hostage situations, though it is, you know, something that does happen on occasion. We will